Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Maisie Mock. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Israel orders Palestinians in northern Gaza to leave, indicating a land offensive is approaching. Locally, Health Chief Lo Chong Mao warns of a double threat of COVID and flu this winter. And a chain store that specialized in pork knuckles has shut its doors. Israel has ordered more than 1 million Palestinians to get out of the northern Gaza Strip within 24 hours. The Israelis say the evacuation notice is a humanitarian measure, but the UN warned of devastating consequences. Explosions have continued to rock the besieged Gaza Strip as Israeli airstrikes pulverized sites belonging to the Palestinian group Hamas, which launched a surprise attack on Israel last Saturday. More than 4,000 tons of explosives were dropped on Gaza in the past week, causing massive destruction in the tiny enclave inhabited by 2 million Palestinians. Now, Israel has ordered more than 1 million people in northern Gaza to move to the south in the clearest signal that a land offensive is set to begin. The United Nations warned that a massive evacuation will have devastating humanitarian consequences and intensify the suffering of Palestinians after Israel sought their food, water and electricity. We already are in an untenable situation. People need to be able to... Uh, people anywhere need to be able to move to find safety. We can't underscore enough the dire humanitarian situation that is getting direr and direr uh, every day, if not by the hour. Hamas urged Palestinians to stay put. With the loss of power, hospitals in besieged Gaza are unable to cope with the large numbers of casualties caused by Israeli bombs. One doctor said his hospital will soon become a mass grave. More than 1,500 Palestinians and 1,300 people in Israel have been killed since the conflict began. About 150 people were kidnapped by Hamas. With signs of the conflict escalating, foreigners are fleeing Israel. The first flight carrying French nationals arrived in Paris. Another plane arrived in New Delhi and one landed in Kathmandu, where reunited families rejoiced. But relief agencies pointed out that the Palestinians in Gaza have nowhere to go. A staff member of the Israeli embassy in Beijing has been sent to hospital after being attacked on the street. The victim is in stable condition in hospital. A witness said the attacker appeared to be non-Chinese. It came as Israel criticized China for not condemning the Hamas offensive. Beijing has called for restraint in the Gaza conflict, while Foreign Minister Wang Yi said Palestinians must be given their legitimate rights. Beijing police stepped up security outside the Israeli embassy following the stabbing. Hamas has denied Israeli claims that its fighters beheaded children and hid out at the Western media. This is completely shame that these media outlets follow such lies and Israeli propaganda without making simple efforts to check the, the reality of these allegations. We firmly deny these allegations, and as we reject this media bias, we call on the media agencies to abide by the journalism code of ethics. On Wednesday, U.S. President Joe Biden said he was horrified to see pictures of beheaded babies. The White House later clarified that Biden had not seen such photos, but based his comments on news reports and Israeli government claims. France has joined Australia and many European cities in banning pro-Palestinian rallies. But several hundred people defied police and gathered in Paris to support the Palestinians. Officers fired water cannon and tear gas to break up the demonstration. 
police confronted protesters and chased them down the streets of the French capital. Pro-Palestinian rallies were held in other French cities as well, while rights advocates accused the government of hypocrisy, double standards and caving in to Israeli pressure. Locally, Health Secretary Lo Chong Mao has warned the public not to ignore the double threat of COVID and flu this winter. This comes as health officials revealed that 129 people died during the summer flu season. As Hong Kong prepares for its first winter since all COVID measures were dropped, Health Chief Lo Chong Mao expects an outbreak of upper respiratory infections, especially seasonal influenza. During a meeting of the Legislative Council's Health Services Panel, he urged the public to remain vigilant against the double threat of COVID and flu. It's been a while since the last wave of COVID-19 epidemic. We believe that uh, overall speaking, the population now has a lower immunity level. In light of the lifting of um, mask wearing requirement, there could be a co-circulation of COVID-19 as well as influenza. The health department disclosed that between the start of the summer flu season in August and last Saturday, 214 adults who caught the flu needed intensive care and 129 of them died. During the same period, 13 children were severely ill from flu and one died. Nine of the children did not receive a flu jab. I don't know, Lawmaker Rebecca Chan asked if it's too late for primary and secondary students to wait for outreach teams to provide jabs on campus next month. Principal Medical Officer N. Chi said as the winter flu season is usually between January and April, people should be vaccinated between now and December. The government has bought over 920,000 doses of flu vaccines this year. It uses about 900,000 doses each year. Chief Executive John Lee will lead a 70-member delegation to Beijing for the Belt and Road Forum. I look forward to telling the business and political heavyweights from about all over the world the good and real stories of Hong Kong, especially our vital role in the Belt and Road in helping to build a global community with a rewarding and shared future for us all. President Xi Jinping will deliver the keynote address at the forum, which opens on Tuesday. His Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, and representatives of over 130 countries and regions will be among the participants. Li's delegation includes Hong Kong's top officials and business leaders. They will head to Beijing on Monday. A chain store that specialized in pork knuckles has shut its stores, leaving customers with prepaid coupons in a quandary. The Consumer Council says it will follow up on the case. Janice Yu reports. Retailer iPork has apologized to customers for shutting down its 17 stores without warning. In a post on Facebook, the chain, which specializes in selling pork knuckles, said it encountered marketing challenges after the pandemic. It said with rising food prices and higher rents, it could not make a profit. Its franchisees have also been pulling out before the contracts expired. iPork said it may take legal measures to resolve conflicts with franchisees. Consumer Council Chief Executive Gilly Wong said, so far it has received six complaints from holders of iPork coupons. The amount involved is $1,350. Wong added that the watchdog will follow up the case as the company did not give more information on refunds to coupon holders apart from telling them to fill out an online form for inquiries. The Mandatory Provident Fund Schemes Authority has also stepped in, saying the firm has not made contributions amounting to $130,000 for 30 employees. Dennis Yu, HKIBC.
China's economy has received another boost as the pace of decline in its exports and imports slowed down for the second month. In addition, Beijing's trade surplus rose. Sachin Katfi reports. The latest statistics from the mainland signal that the world's second biggest economy is improving. Despite new orders, exports in September declined for a fifth straight month, falling 6.2 percent from a year ago to 299 billion U.S. dollars. That compared with a fall of 8.8 percent in the previous month. Imports also slid 6.2 percent, with inbound shipments valued at 221 billion dollars. But with the rise in domestic demand, the decline was smaller than the 7.3 percent recorded in August. China's trade surplus rose to 78 billion dollars, up from 68 billion dollars in August. Liu Daliang, spokesman for the General Administration of Customs, said China still faces many challenges in foreign trade because of protectionism, geopolitical tensions, and sluggish growth overseas. Sachin Karpi, HKIBC. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index ended the day down by 424 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Trekker Fund was down 42 cents, JD.com was down $13.50, while Tencent was down $9.80. AIA was down $1.70, while Wusi Biologic was down 55 cents. Fans of the Frozen movies are counting down the days before they can visit the Kingdom of Arendelle in Hong Kong Disneyland. One attraction features lifelike characters produced by state-of-the-art technology. Janice Lowe had a sneak preview. The Kingdom of Arendelle opens its doors in Hong Kong Disneyland next month. And visitors will be warmly welcomed by Anna at the interactive show Playhouse in the Woods. Fans of the Frozen movies can also meet Elsa and get a glimpse of her magical powers. The show only features the royal sisters and Olaf the snowman, but visitors can meet other characters in the Frozen Ever After boat ride. You can experience the audio animatronic figures that we have put and designed into the into the ride to to realize and and uh, to to make all the uh, characters from Frozen into living characters that you can meet uh, inside the attraction, um, and um, as well as the. Um, the simulation that we put in in the boat ride that our team had to do very meticulous calculation of the um, boat ride uh, depending on the on the weight as well as philosophy uh, velocity that um, that that the whole attraction is enthusiasts should be prepared to get wet but if they want to stay dry they can opt for another attraction in Arendelle. I'm about to hop onto Wandering Oak and Sliding Slays, the brand new roller coaster in the world of Frozen. You're almost there, Sven. We'll have our friends at the top. <laughs> While the ride gives you a panoramic view of Arendelle, it only lasts 61 seconds. Janice Lowe, HKIBC. That's our main news for Friday night. Our late news tonight is at the earlier time of 10.30. I'm Maisie Mock. Good night.